You're listening to Sarah Hagen Backstage, with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick, both inside and outside of the music business. Welcome to Sarah Hagen Backstage. My guest today, Gary Husband, is a world-renowned drummer, piano player, and composer who has played with so many fantastic musicians like Alan Holdsworth, John McLaughlin, and Jack Bruce, just to name a few. We are going to talk today about how being a multi-instrumentalist has given him an amazing perspective on music as a whole, this incredible drum family that we are a part of, and his support of and advice to the next generation. So come along with me as I catch up with Gary Husband. Gary, welcome to the podcast. Sarah, thank you very much for having me. This is fantastic. And uh, thanks. I really appreciate the invitation. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm really great. How about you? I'm great. Yeah, I'm, and I'm overjoyed to see you. Um, it's It's been a while since we were in touch last time, and uh, I'm really excited for your for your current stream of, of uh, these great interviews you're doing and stuff. And, uh, you know, I was almost on the verge of saying, hey, uh, I'm here. No, I wasn't. <laughs> But uh, it, it must have been, uh, I felt for all the drummers, and I, and I really relate to your um, past experience, all your many years of experience in, in how to deal with us maniacs. And oh, how to, my goodness. And, and how to talk to them. And I mean, it's all there. And, and, and I can see how utterly relaxed and at home drummers are. So it must be, uh, it must be just about the best interview station out there right now. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That it, that is incredible to hear, and I I appreciate that so yeah, so. Yeah, the are fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I I was um you know I I was I started this just to really carry on conversations with my friends because that's yeah. my favorite thing about this industry, just the the communication and the relationships and all of that. Um, but it's so funny you mentioned that, like the 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 ability to like talk drums and two drummers and everything. And I think that that's just yeah. one of my favorite things ever because we can go way deep into the gear conversations, you know, mm -hmm. and be a little bit geeky about it. But then in reality, we are just like a big family sharing, you know, our, our lives with each other. Mm -hmm. And so this has been a great platform to do that. And, and I've been loving it. And and I've had you on my list since the very beginning. And I know I kept saying, let's do this, let's do this. And we finally are making it happen. So, so uh, that, means, that means a lot to me, Sarah. Thanks. Thank absolutely. You. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I just, I want to hear like how things have been for you over the past couple of years. I've been following along on social media. You are so great about posting and sharing and all of that. And I personally am loving the posts where you give some like backstory and some context to the picture or the video that you post. Um, you talk a lot about like what you were feeling in that moment or what was happening. And that's been amazing to to read and to feel from you. That's because you're old school, Sarah. <laughs> no, 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 I have to tell you, I, I've actually sort of like, sat back in the chair and gone don't people read anything anymore you know i there, there are some questions and it's very kind of you to highlight these um posts that that i've done uh i consider backstory to be quite important you know if you want to get if you want to you know make a point or be understood i think it's it's, it's important to try and articulate well what you feel and, and what's behind the passion you've had to, to post something if it's about a musician or a an event or a place um, or an activity, you know, you can um, you can ex you can explain it. You, usually, of course, in our case, it, it, it's to sort of talk about, you know, a band mm -hmm. <laughs> or someone you're on the road with or a great concert we had the other night or, or a bit even down to a bit of film or promotion for something. And uh, and in which the subject matter, I explain everything and everybody's name is there. Everybody's been mentioned who's in the band. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all there. Where we are, who's in the band, what we're doing. And what's the first question I get? Uh, who, who's, a, you know, who's, who's touring with you guys? Who's on drums? Who's I that know. Bass 
<laughs> and you think, well, man. Anyway. I just, yeah, you're saying I just outlined it. I just put it all there. I know. I see those comments. I see those comments too. And you're great about answering them. Um, oh, good. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But I, I always, when I see like a long caption, I always want to read it because I feel like if you're taking the time to write something like that, then you have something to say and it's worth, yes. and it's worth reading. And, and it always is, you know, like you, like you just mentioned, you always give a shout out to the other musicians. Um, when you go to see a show, I love that you you go and see music and you shout out the musicians that you're, that you're uh, watching and talk about the show and how you, what, you know, what music you liked. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's super great. And there was one post mm. recently that you posted about um, your start, like what got you drumming? Um, mm. And it was a clip of the Stan Kenton Orchestra, if I'm not mistaken, with. Yeah, yeah. And I, so the drummer, um, and you have to remind me of his name, John. Yeah, John Von Orland. Okay. And, and his nickname was the Baron, right? Because I did look him up. Okay. And I was like, how have I never heard of this person before? Great player, like really fantastic. And I had oh, no yeah. idea. And he was yeah. like your main, the reason that you started playing, right? He, he really was. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to watch my dad um, regularly broadcast, uh, performing with a, a, a big band, like, you know, I guess you could say. Um, and, um, and that was all, you know, that was also very interesting by this point, I'm, I'm really, really heavily immersed in, in theory and classical piano, which was no small or short period. Um, and, um, really the, I, I think there was a hankering to, to want to get involved in drums. It's, you know, I'm talking you know, maybe 11 years old, 10, even early, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, but I, I used to go with him and I remember the drummer in the band, this, this really old school thing of having, I think he must have had something of the equivalent of his, like a Zildjian crash ride in 20 inch. Um, when, I got, when I got to it, I just remember that symbol as having no ID, ID marks or function marks. Right. Uh, it, just a symbol so I you know and I, but I knew it was a Zildjian symbol um, but the most amazing thing that communicated with me uh, resonated with me was was the fact that he had one symbol and not only was this a big band full of dynamic arrangements like whispers up to a, you know large crescendos a raw you know exciting stabs and uh, while riding this guy did everything on the one symbol wow. and and, it, and it's quite something you know when you when you particularly as you bear in mind this he, you know the band would would actually be play, playing kind of like pop uh, mm -hmm. songs of the, of the era in the 60s is this mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know and they'd be playing kind of like rock hits in a sort of somebody would have done a big band chart or something like that so really the, the the music really stretched from sort of more contemporary stuff through swing to old uh, vaudeville or, or music hall as they call it in england and you know um i was just amazed that this guy could do it all at every velocity every volume in every style and i thought yeah you know that's that's what a drummer is but that that really appealed to a more sort of professional um kind of understanding of, of what it would be to be a good drummer. Uh, then there was the other side of the coin that somebody that just push, switches your light on. And, and, and this guy, John von Olin really, really did that. And, um, I'll never forget, um, reading, um, uh, no, I've forgotten what I was going to say, but the interesting thing about, about that, that clip, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you played the video, the accompanying video to I the did. Part. Yes. And you saw you saw how absolutely deranged he gets with passion. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Excuse me. All all consuming, naked, raw heart and passion. And 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 I just looked at him and I looked at the madness in his eyes, mm -hmm. how sent he was by this whole experience. 
and to be in the middle of that band and that exhilarating chart that they were playing. And he was, this was like, I can never dream of being any, because I also wanted to be a racing driver at this point, by the way. Um, yes, but, that, well, that's a, that's a question coming up. So we have to oh, address okay. that too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, um, and, uh, and I'm going to say, well, if I'm not going to do that after seeing mm -hmm. this, you know, this is possibly, this is not possible that it can be something I can just file away or stifle, you know, right. that I have to do that. Yes. And, and when I saw him do that, that, that was it. And that was way back in 1972. I will have mm -hmm. been 12 years old. And I was just hook, line, and sinker. That was it. It was going to be drums. It's amazing. I, I just like reading reading your caption on that post on Instagram. I mm. felt it. You know, I could feel it because I have felt that. And it's yeah. a it's an amazing thing. And I feel like, you know, you and all of the other drumming greats, you know, you look at these drummers and you know that they have to play, right? Like you can't yeah. you can't yeah. take Steve Gadd and you know what what is Steve what would Steve Gadd do if he wasn't drumming? He has to drum. <laughs> like that's that's it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And, the, the whole essence, the whole reason for being, uh, it, it, it's so, I mean, I know how much he tours, for instance. I think he prefers being on the road more than he does being at home. <laughs> I think it's funny, but it's, uh, I understand completely, you know, yeah. it, it's, um, it's just everything. It, and, and I think really uh, for the people that kind of, uh, give this thing a fair crack of the whip and, and maybe decide that maybe it's, it's not for them at least full time. So you've got like a sort of partial foot in the water. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I was on the road since I was 16, uh, living on a suitcase, sleeping on like, um, you know, benches on a train platform waiting for the early train next day to mm -hmm. get to these one nighters that we've been doing. Yeah. So I, you know, I had to have uh, quite a quite a series of different styles of chops together, and this the kind of like, uh, say, you know, uh, you know, figuring out my travel, not mm -hmm. for just tomorrow, but in three days' time, and who I meet up with at a particular point to travel to there to meet a bigger car, and is there room for me in that car, and we can all go together, and all that kind of stuff, Absolutely. from day to day to day to day to day. And uh, and of course, sight read any of this sort of four hundred strong book that was that was um, my constant companion in those early big band days. So, uh, yeah. You know, and you think, well, you know, that was it was almost like the equivalent of signing up to go, to work to to go and you know enrollment in the services or something or you know what they call in England national services or used to national service or going to the army or marines or something where it really just sets you up for, for life. And right. I'm talking about pretty sort of brutal, hardcore, old, old, old world musicians as well. And it, right. it, was, a, it was a rough ride. You know, I, I don't, if you talk to any drummers sort of actor from the 70s, I think they'll probably all tell you the same thing. But I'm sure it's nothing you don't know yourself, Sarah, with, yeah. with the history and what you've seen and, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Way, just, oh, I, I just have to, I just have to add that while we were just on the subject of John von Olin from Indianapolis, I think he was. By yes. The way, yes. Um, uh, this ride symbol, apparently Stan Kenton used to get his ride symbols from Zildjian, as far back as the yes. well, he was only he was only alive for like until the mid seventies, but his, this this twenty six, I think it was a twenty six inch. Right. Is that possible? Yes. Yeah. Back in the day, I, I've actually seen yeah. a 30 inch ride symbol, which is wow. crazy. But yes, I, yeah. 26 was like um, way more common. Now it's very rare, but back then it was pretty common. Yeah. And I think another one that was 24, like a, maybe an alternative ride or something has changed. Mm -hmm. And he had an equally big um, China type of some kind. And, uh, and maybe a more, a much more modest crash, maybe 18 or 19. John was a big mm -hmm. guy, so he looks big in front of the, you know, the drums look, look, look actually very big. 
and symbols look very big because they were but yeah he also looked big because he was a very big guy so the whole thing was you know big guy big symbols big drums big yes. sound. big and presence right <clears throat> big big presence big passion big heart i mean what's mm -hmm. not to, to to fall in love with that's so so great and and you yeah. mentioned too that you you were playing piano before drums right so that was your start in music was was piano yeah okay it um, was, and you, uh, it, yeah it was good that was my dad's insistence i think probably a lot of you know there that this was an attitude that was more prevalent perhaps back then where he'd say listen you know you you love all kinds of music you want to be active in a lot of different kinds of music so if you're going to get the grounding in if you're going to play anything you're going to do classical piano mm -hmm. you can play whatever else you want but you will do classical piano yeah and, that was, and that's so smart it, it really yeah, it, oh, oh my really gosh was. i'm sure it helped you too with like reading music you already had you know that totally. that background um yeah for reading and and you know how important it is with all the things that you do and have done over the years to to be a great reader too so that's that's incredible yeah. and and i hear i hear um i'm sure a lot of people would say this but in your drumming i hear the fact that you are a piano player because it's so musical there's not um or it comes through i guess is what i'm trying to say the the, mm. the musicality comes through in your playing Oh, that's nice of you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I also love that you're, you know, you tour, you're primarily playing uh, keys now, but you also, you also get up on the drums. You have, um, you do double drumming. I've seen a bunch of clips of that, which um, on this, uh, when you're touring with John McLaughlin, right? Mm-hmm. It's so great. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I used to do the same with Billy Cobham, too, because um, uh, he... Um, the, I think it was the Koblenz Fest. No, where well, was one of the big drum festivals in Germany? I can't remember now. But anyway, it was just a spontaneous thing, and I just jumped up and started jamming with one of the drummers that was also playing there, and um, on on electric piano. Mm -hmm. And and Billy was around to see that, and he thought, "Wait a minute." He's a drummer, isn't he? And you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, uh, he was, um, you know, uh, really interested in this some kind of prospect of if I came aboard the band, I'd be principally keyboard player, but also take over a drums thing. And you either go to percussion or Zen drum or something like this mm -hmm. at the time. So it was uh, that that he was he was probably the first. Actually, he was the first to feature me as a keyboardist on stage. That's so interesting. I was going to ask that yeah. question because I know that you've played keyboards with a lot of different drummers. And, yeah. um, you know, I feel like that's like you already have that built in relationship and kind of like trust that you need when you're when you're in a playing situation together. So that must feel really comfortable. Yeah. On it, both yeah. sides. Right. It, it does. I mean, it, it, it's it's just a testament to how easy it is to play with with wide, wide people, musical people, people just kind of stretch, stretch the net, the, the net wide, you know, mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're hip to a lot of uh, about music and, and about being involved in music and experienced at that. And, and usually it's those people who, um, it's just an instant connection. And, and, and if, um, if, uh, if there's something to really endorse about perhaps taking up the second instrument if drummers don't already do that it's the fact that you the drums give such a lot to any other instrument they get they give a well they, i mean the physical sense that it gives you this independence that they, they give you coordination they give you um a way of um um I think to do with the con con conception of of music, what what it what it's like to be in a form, you you start to understand a form of writing and and a, and a form and a flow of a piece more instead of just you know play sixteen bars swing or play thirty two bars rock or whatever, mm -hmm. and 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 you learn this 
not only the, about form, but you're able to interact with a greater kind of sensibility with, with musicians um, if you're versed with some knowledge and experience of something like piano, or even a melody instrument of any kind or a harmony instrument, you start to understand how things are formed and how certain little bass notes will crop up in the same place in the last time through a tune, only they're different. And that mm -hmm. gives poignancy for it, to that. And, and, and you, you start really seeing the bigger picture involved in music and not just from um, a drum point of view, which isn't to, to uh, play down um, anybody who plays soul drums, not, not mm -hmm. at all. But but you know most most of the great drummers can just be great drummers and and not another instrumentalist and it's they're so great that there's nothing to worry about but they're they're living and breathing forms of music and they understand everything but sometimes it can be a real benefit um, and it could be really kind of uh, what do you call it enlarging uh, sort of enriching but but mm -hmm. broadening. Yeah, expanding, right? Yeah, expanding. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. So to um, to have this other kind of thing to your belt, you know, making music from the other side of the stage, as it were, and with a drummer instead of being the drummer, it's it's quite a special feeling. I bet and I can I can imagine you anticipating, <coughs> you know, anticipating what is coming on the drums, and you know the. Yeah. And and like you mentioned, the form and all of that, it just uh, it just works really really well, and and it's yeah. great. Um, and it also, I'm sure, with you composing music as well, um, having that broad knowledge of you know the melody and the beat and all of that stuff, because you do mm. hear, you know, the, there are musicians who kind of write all their own parts, you know, and and but they are not primarily or they don't have the 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 experience on the drums um mm. and so you know and then a lot of times you know they'll have drummers go in and redo the drum parts which is always great um but with you you have you have that knowledge and those skills so um so the music is is just fantastic um um and so i just uh, before oh. i forget because you mentioned you just mentioned the the racing thing and <laughs> i cannot forget to to circle back to that really quickly because I am fascinated by the fact that there are a few drummers in our community who like were were or could have been professional race car drummer uh race car drivers like uh Simon Phillips and Dave Weckel and now I find this out about you and I'm just like what is the correlation here it's strange isn't it yeah um I don't know I I, I wouldn't like to think it was just about speed um okay. I, I i think the 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 driving thing i mean if, if you anybody familiar with a movie made in 1970 or something called le mans uh with steve mcqueen about the the famous race track there mm -hmm. and he's a driver in the film and he does all his, his own stunts by the way as you oh, would expect nice. steve mcqueen but yes. but um yeah he did all his own driving much to the delight of the insurance companies, I'm sure. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And um, there was an accompanying interview with the film. Um, it was back back then. Everybody was, uh, if any sort of male did an interview, he wouldn't sort of say he or she like we do these days. So mm -hmm. excuse that. But but he actually was. Uh, they showed this uh, very famous clip of him saying, you know. I don't think there's a. I can't do the voice, but I don't think there's a. I don't think there's a race car driver alive who can tell you why he races. But I believe he can show you. Mm. Now, in that statement, there was something that really met music there. Yeah. Because you know, we we. I don't really know if we know why we play. We just know we have to. Right. And and life just wouldn't be the experience that it is without it. Yes. Um, uh, so maybe, maybe there's that at the root of, of, of a correlation somehow. Um, uh, and there is there was the fix of the speed thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was an element of that. But more so, 
about the 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 accuracy more more so about the judgment what 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 it would take to approach a corner and how you manipulate that and mm -hmm. manipulate the people you're up against they say against of course this is sport we're talking that's not music it's, right it's, of course it's a race <laughs> yes and uh uh it uh I, but i think uh a lot about the skill and the control and the the and of course the speed <laughs> yes yeah and and, yeah. and all that thing at high speed you know which is again a little bit like music because it can be very dizzying you know i've been playing high energy gigs um and the music's pretty taxing and sometimes things could go on for quite a long time mm -hmm. and you can really physically feel as if you're uh, in touch with something in, in, in a vast reserve somewhere in, from inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. But you're bringing up this energy. And it's, it's almost like you're looking at yourself in disbelief in a way. Like, how can this be coming? From, you know, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the stamina that it takes, right? And yeah, the stamina. The coordination. I think there's something there with the coordination with your brain and your limbs. Yeah. And uh, Dave Weckl mentioned like the the pedals and you know the the timing uh, of that kind of thing. So, uh, right, timing. there's something there for sure. Yeah, timing. Oh yeah, that and with boxing too. I mean, I I suppose with with so many sports, the tennis. Yeah, I watch, I watch them too, and. Uh, I'm not. I'm not such a big football head, but um, I, I like the. You know, there are certain sports. I'm really, really. Yeah, uh, and, I. And, I think bo boxing for sure. I've. I know I've mentioned that before, but um, yeah. the timing and the science of it, and the coordination and the anticipation of the other person's moves. I, yeah. I'm. I. I am a boxer and uh, was a USA boxing coach for. Um, years ago, um, I was a coach and it, and it is one of those things where I think drumming helped my boxing and vice versa. Right. Oh, that's, that's, that's wild. Yes. Yeah. A whole different life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, but, I, but I, recently, I was... recently I've started back up and it is, it is, um, it is one of those things that I feel like there's a correlation there. There's timing, there are rhythms combinations have rhythms to them you know i was just working on like um a nine uh point combination and it there's the time the timing is there it, it feels like musical timing yeah yeah i yeah. totally see see where where you are on that and totally the same page and, and that, that was the that was the one element that uh, that i that i failed to mention yeah of course the timing yeah. And and this and also this anticipation of what somebody else is going to do. This is all yes. identical to a musical conversation. Yes. It's like we we we're, we're actually playing if if you are conversing you're being properly you know spontaneous uh and uh, open in the moment just mm -hmm. in that moment. And uh and the whole thing is dependent on your interaction and what you manage to sort of get out of each other. And if you're really on top of every single moment and every single little event, it can really be something uh, special. And, and of course, something that uh, will never be heard again in that way. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and me. thankfully in music, you know, you don't have people knocking each other out often. So it's good. <laughs> right. But, but right, you know, into the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pushy. Yeah, exactly. Running you into the wall or yeah, all of those mm. things. It's more it's more collaborative, which is a good thing. <laughs> so, but you know, I, I do love it. It is it is interesting when you see musicians that just fit together. Well, they read each other, right? They anticipate each other. And it's yeah. like, so beautiful. Such it a beautiful really thing. It's yeah. just life of farming. It was absolutely. Uh, yeah. What, what um, got right away right from the beginning yes and i i love the kind of theme that's going on here of like you have to right it's in you and you have to do it that's the reason there's no other reason and i it brings me back to a meeting that um i was in once talking about uh marketing um 
concepts and plans and things like that. Uh, there was a company that was doing a whole plan. And the question came up and a group of people sitting around a conference table. The question came up, why do drummers drum? Why do drummers drum? Why, what is the reason? And the questions were, oh, do they do it for the girls, you know, or for the, the attention? Or do they do <laughs> That would be one of the <laughs> biggest mistakes ever. Where it's always the guitar player. And if it isn't a guitar player, it's the tennis it's, expert. Come oh, on. Really? You know this. Oh, no. Come on. And, and, and I thought, so I mean, who could, who could, why would anybody watch a sax player? You know, I'm watching the drummer. <laughs> that was better than that. Nothing. So, I mean, I, I know the tenor players invariably, you know, don't exactly sort of break out into sweat too often. And they've usually got a very nicely pressed shirt and very clean <laughs> shoes. And, and, uh, and they look, they look snappy, you know, and yes. poor drummer, you know, sweating away the back and, um, you know. It's just what it is, but but I I think I know who I'd rather sort of hang out with. <laughs> right, well, and that's and that is the thing. Like that, what came out of the the that meeting? I remember them coming around to me and they, why do drummers drum? I said because we have to. Oh, there is that's no true. choice, right? Like we have to. Um, but you know, we are like you just mentioned the community, the drumming community. I say this all the time. I'm repeating myself, but I have to say it. It is incredible. The support, the collaboration, the love, the family atmosphere. Um, you know, one of the things that I loved doing in artist relations was fostering that feeling and, you know, making sure that everyone knew this is real. This isn't a business. Um, the, the, the relationships are real. That part mm -hmm. isn't the, the business. There's a business relationship there, too, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But but the friendship is real. The relationship is real beyond companies, beyond business relationships. And I think that it's seen, we love to hang out together. I see, you know, I, when I see you ran into um, the snarky puppy guys recently and yeah, yeah. gave a shout out to Dennis Chambers recently. And it's just, oh, yeah. you know, we love each other. It's, that's how it is. Um, oh, sure do. We sure do. And I, and, and, and I must say that, that, that even up against other, I'd love to think that it was that way among musicians on a mainstay sort of basis. But I have to say, um, guitar players are weirdos. You know, <laughs> they really, they, they can be, they can be something or they can be something else. Or it's, uh, you know, some of them, the, there's nothing like the same embrace as a, a brother or sistership that there is in drums, but for sure. But yeah. piano players with each other, I'm sorry for any piano players watching this, but you are not my kind of people. Oh, no. <laughs> no, oh, no. no. But it, it usually comes, it only seems to exist between piano players. There's a particular kind of special friction between wow. piano players. And I really don't understand what that is. Um, That's so interesting. I, I, may be, I... I may be exaggerating, but it's if we talk about the, the, the drumming uh, family as a real brothership or sistership, um, then I would say piano players are the antithesis of that. Antithesis, <laughs> however you say that word. That's a good word. Without blinking. Um... Yeah, that's that's interesting. I had no idea about that. I mean, I'm not I'm just not really in that world. I've gotten a little <coughs> bit more in that world, um, working with the piano brand of um, of Musora, which has been great. But uh, yeah. I, I didn't realize that. I think I kind of come across I, I approach things at, from the perspective of the drumming world. And so um, so maybe I'm coming at it with like, too big of a smile on my face. I don't I, know. Yeah. I have I have to smile too because I I really wouldn't like to take 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 that stuff seriously. Yeah, uh, you can't. It kind of it's kind of like reviews, and, you know, all these kind of aspects inside what it is to be a musician or an artist or whatever. A lot of people get very upset about reviews or mm -hmm. especially bad reviews. I don't believe any of the good ones any more than I believe the bad ones. Mm, yes, I, I really don't. It doesn't matter. Um, I know it's a cliched thing for people to say, as long as they're talking about me or as long as they're talking about the record, you know, 
then uh, great. You know, people can make their own minds up, which is exactly true. Yeah. Um, it, it can be a, a bit of a weird situation when piano players kind of clam up if you ask them anything. <laughs> yeah. What modifications have you done to your synth? You know, how, what are you going through there? Oh, well, you know, it's a, it's a thing. You know. <laughs> there's a, there's okay, a need what? to kind of keep things quiet or private. You, I mean, drum, look at look at the way as we are as drummers. Yeah, sure. I put that symbol on top of that. I mean, yes. it before, but it's really neat, isn't it? You yeah. Know, we're sharing anecdotes, we're sharing ideas. We're all watching each other. Mm -hmm. uh, who is it who said, that, you know, people, you know, real artists don't borrow from each other. They steal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we yeah. do that. And we're so accommodating with it, uh, which is absolutely beautiful. You know, absolutely. You, you're interviewing all these um, amazing artists um, up alongside people I don't know really, I haven't had experience of quite so much. Mm hmm but they're all the same. They're all in this club. It's there's no difference between us. Yes, it really is the most beautiful thing. It is. It is beautiful. And one thing that really gives me a lot of hope is that the young drummers are the same. You know, I I I kind of grew up in this industry really young. I came in at you know I was interning at Zildjian at 21 years old, and so. You know, I, I to kind of grow up in this industry and suddenly a lot of the drummers are younger than me now, where it was the opposite years back. I'm seeing these young drummers really like embracing the the culture of of our community and and giving credit to their influences and their influences, influences. And it's just a beautiful thing to see. <coughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's Sorry so great. about me. Off, by the way, it's um, it's nice and cold here in Norway right now. <laughs> well, um, I, actually, oh, I'm sorry that I'm sorry that you're not feeling um, a hundred percent, but but don't worry about the cough. And tell us about Norway. What are you doing right now in Norway? Oh, uh, I'm touring with some some friends, um, uh, a very dear friend um, who I'm sort of sharing rhythm section duties with. Uh, I'm playing drums on this tour. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and his name is Per Matisson. He's a, he comes from a very musical family. Uh, four brothers, very high achieving musicians, each one of them. And uh, he's a, he's a great bass player. I've been coming over here and playing with him a long time, different groups. And his ex wife is uh, a great um, uh, pianist called Olga. Kon oh, I can't even speak. Olga Konkova. Thank mm -hmm. you. And um, She's wonderful, and uh, what what an artist she is. And then there's another uh, uh, keyboardist from Bodo. I think it's in this in the north of Norway, called Jan Gunnar Hoff, and he's um, he plays the second show or the second set, if you like. So there's this kind of um, quite expressive, quite uh, abstract piano trio music in the first set, and um, and more of a sort of jazz fusion, maybe sort of more funky second set with with uh, more electric and pair. Madison goes over to electric bass for that. So we're we're doing the whole kind of evening behind these two sort of keyboard artists. Right. That sounds fantastic. Who I'm not sure if they get on or not. Anyway, <laughs> we just come. <laughs> from You'll have to get them together and see if there's any friction there. <laughs> they, they don't seem to be hanging out at the bar very much. <laughs> And they're definitely not sharing dressing rooms. Anyway. I love it. Uh, it's too uh, funny. So I'm just doing that. And, and we've just made um, a recording last three days in a great studio here in Oslo here called Propeller Recordings. And um, and that's a different kind of music again, fronted by his brother, uh, um, uh, Hans Mattison. He's a great guitar player. So uh, we've been doing his tunes. I've been playing some drums and keyboards on that. And uh, the, the nice thing is kind of three sets of uh, different music, really, by nature, um, but the same set of symbols. So I'm, I'm taking a leaf out of my that first inspiration from my dad's days, you know, the guy who played everything with one. Yes. With one crush ride, 20 inch. 
and uh, and of course you can make music happen, different music, you know, with different sets of symbols. And you know, I, sp I spoke to a drum shop recently who, because I wanted to get some symbols for the NDR band, uh, big band who I play with sometimes in Hamburg. Um, and I asked for these quite heavy duty symbols. Mm -hmm. He said, no, 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 you wouldn't want those for big band. You don't know this big band, man. I mean, yeah, they, you need some volume, you know, right? There's like death metal when they get <laughs> when they get going, I'll tell you. It's loud. I need some power. He said, Yeah, but even then with a big band, you don't want those. I said, Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, you know, but, you know better what you need. You need some, you know, yeah. bigger bells, more projection, you heavier do, because if you take the trouble as drummer, which I think we all have to do is to really, really do the housekeeping in the group. I mm -hmm. want to know how the bass player is feeling. Does he feel like being hi-hat side or is he quite content with my sort of various ride cymbal sides on this side? Or is he happier being, you know, I want to know how people are feeling um, in the music and especially as a reaction to, from what I'm doing. Um, am I too loud invariably am i getting too uh, excitable am i getting not excitable enough yeah <laughs> am i supporting you am i fighting you are you feel you know am i antagonizing you in how i'm playing anything and it's not to receive compliments well it's not all about receiving compliments <laughs> but, but invariably the answer is oh man you know I'll let you know, but no, I'm I'm very happy, you know, very comfortable, which is great. And and yeah. and and as soon as I know that, I'm on the right track for them because we're playing for them. We're we're providing a center in the music for them all to feel, uh, to include them in the way everything's feeling. But and we're the certain to a certain large extent, we're we're the governor of that uh, right. in a lot of ways. But if we can pull in everybody to our kind of center or what we should hopefully see as a, as a center unless it's abstract music um is is just something that everybody can nobody's having a hard time with sure i mean sometimes it can be nice to have a hard time and people are like going i don't know how to play with you but i sure would like to get better at it you know or, <laughs> or you know it's like people say i'd love to be able to play with him but i'd, I'd lose him in a minute in a right. second right 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 where to start so that's another thing but but i think to 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 really feel dutiful towards the project at hand so so i ask like the lead saxophonist or the lead alto player or the lead trombone or lead trumpet what are you hearing from my ride symbol are you are you happy with that is that a clear mm -hmm. enough signal is there enough is it good enough kind of like wash to distinction ratio for you or are you getting too much wash you're not hearing it's not distinct enough and and uh, and people know that you've taken the time to consider these you know these things and uh and they tell you you know and i've said i kind of prefer it when you go to the other one and what's the other one it's a heavier sort of darker thing with more definition and not so much ring not so much mm -hmm. wash so i'll remember that that you know by and large those musicians are kind of like they're quite digging on the fact because it, it, it travels too. It travels mm -hmm. in a large band, you know, what, 16 and 17 people. You need a symbol that can fill the stage without right. being oppressive and be without being dominant, you know, this silly dominant force. It just has to be there and strong for them. And uh, yeah, it, it's a never ending learning kind of experience. But but, but I, I do take the trouble to encourage young drones to do that. Uh, since it's always worked for me, they're they're always buying me drinks anyway. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. I think it is. That is a really, really great piece of advice, right? Like, be the caretaker of other people's comfort level, right? And yeah. with what you're doing, and then and then I'm sure that that makes them feel really great about you and your ability to kind of like fit their need and understand their need and it makes you all better as a group and then yeah. you know and then you get asked back or you get you know you get in these collaborative situations that you're in right now because people really yeah. appreciate the way that you care about sound 
Yeah, they, I do care about sound, and and I and I care about the contribution musically too. And mm-hmm. and I will ask them, um, am I? I would inquire to as is as if to really gain their input on if I'm playing their music the way they hear it, or you know if they feel it's a bit of a struggle or a fight. And uh, mm-hmm. so, I mean, I'll, I'll just inquire into those things. I, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but um, I think it is what you picked up, what you said and stated there is obviously entirely correct. It is one of the main um, reasons you get asked back. And uh, it's, it's, you know, you've got like ticks. And, and, and I know that the, the, even though I'm not the... Um, Maybe not the most versatile or adaptable player that they have going to the band because they had they don't have a drummer the NDR so it's it's they have a new drummer every week. Oh, okay. So it's like having a different hairstyle every kind of yeah. Week. <laughs> you know, if you look in the mirror and you see a different person. Right. But but you really yeah of course if if the people are correct when they say you change the drummer you change everything, and and a lot of musicians would would tell you that. Yes. Uh, tell us that and do tell us that but um uh they feel like we are you're you're actually in our sort of top um uh, thing but i might not be the most the most versatile the most perfect for you know i might not be able to play older bassy style drums as well as probably a, a, a guy more suitable and experienced in that area could but they still put me in their top 10 or 20 of of most asked for drummers mm-hmm. and since Germany's the way it is you know their votes matter mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. office and then the office comes to us which right. is really great and it's and it's all kind of uh, a knock-on effect of their enthusiasm and and um and they would soon let me know if it wasn't that the case and, and I'd I'd know because they would they would they wouldn't be inviting me back but right it, it's it's nice to know you know to, to be prepared to, to see your own shortcomings sometimes and to want to get further, get uh, more experienced or more effective in those areas you're perhaps a little weaker at, just to make these guys uh, feel more comfortable with you. And of course, you're generating work for yourself in the process. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And when I think of you, I mean, I do think of versatility when I think of you just because of the styles of music that you've played throughout the years. It's just incredible from jazz, jazz fusion to rock and, you know, pop and funk and all of that. Um, it's just been amazing. And the, the musicians that you've played with, the list of musicians that you've played with has been, has been incredible. And I'm sure you can look back on that and just, you know, think about all those experiences that you had. Absolutely. It's yeah. I've been, very blessed, you know, to, which isn't to say, and, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to doubt any, any, anything, um, any points that we're making, but, but I have to say, and I'm always thinking about when, when doing a, a conversation as, as lovely as this is, um, it, it's always, I always feel that especially important is to, to provide some, um, thoughts for 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 younger ones coming in um and that in this case it's 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 not about um not making an effort it's not a bit it's not about depending on luck it's it's i think to the same degree you have to be proactive i know the world's very different now and it operates in a very different way to when i was coming up as as a player uh, in the really you could the method back then was really just to be heard and, and if you were good if you took, took care of business and sounded good and had good time and uh, and showed a commitment to music in in all all of its aspects then chances are you would start getting work and people if, if people like the way you they hit that you sounding mm-hmm. so um, uh, pretty much that was the name of the game then to just be playing uh, in as many places and be heard by as many people as possible in order to sort of start getting work. Um, then come the difficulties if you are slightly too versatile, because people say, well, 
he can't really be the real thing in a jazz setting if he's able to play rock and roll like that, you know. Right, right. And, and then this is another kind of that's another sort of side of it all. But I still wouldn't give give anything up, you know. Um, I, there was a lot of pressure on me to to really concentrate on one instrument when I was young. This was also about a kind of musician's philosophy back then. That the the actual the the act of d diversifying was actually sort of would actually sort of work against you potentially, and I was encouraged to just say don't tell anybody about the piano, just play drums, just mm. be a drummer, and don't play in that rock and roll band, just play jazz drums, mm -hmm. and then people know who you are. Your name comes into somebody's head, you get one tag, jazz drummer. And I never right. wanted that anyway, so it, it's a funny kind of mix. Yeah, that is a that's an interesting balance. And I absolutely hear what you're saying too because there are those drummers who are known for exactly what they do and it's really specific. Um yeah, yeah. and they and make a name for themselves doing that. And it is funny because when they step yeah. outside of that box, right? Everyone is shocked about what's happening. But a lot of drummers do have that versatility that they do keep under wraps, like you talked about with not talking about being a piano player, not playing rock music. But, um, yeah. you know, I think of um, Antonio Sanchez surprised me with some of his like early influences is like hard, you know, rock music. Uh, Henry Cole was another one I recently interviewed and he grew up playing like metal and hard rock music. And I was like, what in the world? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. But, um, but I tell you, I don't have to look for it. It's starting to get into a bit of a pattern for me. When I when I hear players, you know, it could be that this age around now, I seem to be hearing a lot more similarity between younger, perhaps younger players. I'm not going to just put it, categorize it as that. But I'm hearing a bit of a repeat of things a lot, probably more often than I'd like. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to hear more creativity, but then that's just my aptitude, you know, my, my appetite. Um, but the ones that I do hear who kind of stick out to me are the ones, yes, playing with, playing with musicality and then up, you know, uh, most importantly, but, but they have ability, something wide about their playing, they're stretching, they're reaching a little, bit more mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there's and the clips are a bit longer they're not just mm -hmm. a sensation filled thing like ah, ah, and it's done you know and isn't that just the most amazing thing you've ever seen in life well yeah, yeah. it's amazing uh, yeah i don't know if i'd want to do it yeah. but <laughs> it's amazing and god you know i'd take my hat off if i had one mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and but and you think well you know it it's no coincidence i think that when i s see somebody and they just sort of like provoke me in a certain way i think there's something behind that and sure enough i do a little bit of research on them because i'm very interested in young younger drummers mm -hmm. i want to know where this thing is going right me and, too uh, and i saw an, an amazing one last night i'm gonna have to do a social media post on him but he's absolutely amazing he's in, he's one of these young kind of displacement beat guys but there's a really larger picture musically in him than just just this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. um, because as impressive it is, and as unusual and uh, you know amazing as it is, it's kind of not holding me for too long. So I just need more, more, mm. more, more. Mm -hmm. So I, I will generally invariably go after the ones that we yeah, you find some find find them super interesting. Yes. I'm going to create a post on them and, and just offer my heartfelt congratulations and my um, fanship of them. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing, <coughs> Gary. I can't wait to find yeah. out who that is. And also, just I the see... Very next, the very next post I'll do on Instagram, it'll be him. Okay, perfect. And I will link it. When, we, when this goes live, I will link that post so people can okay. see um yeah. but that's the thing that i so appreciate about you and i know i mentioned it a little bit earlier in this conversation but you do pay attention to the next generation and what's happening and you take every opportunity to call out the great playing that you see and i've seen that so much in your posts and mentioning names and tagging mm -hmm. people and 
And even going back, like you were recently listening to an album and you um, you called out Gary Novak because he played on that album. And I was like, that's so great. I love that. I just I love that you're recognizing that. And then also with this next generation, just seeing what they're doing and and putting it out there that you how much you appreciate their playing. So that's well, thank you. Th- there we are. Thank you, though, Sarah. That, that is that's um, enormously uh, warmed by the fact that you noticed that. But, you know, you mentioned the Gary Novak thing that, yeah, that came up in um, while listening to uh, this album by uh, David Crosby. Yes. Yeah. Which is just unbelievably beautiful. And, and talk about just the old art and standards of the real songwriter. Mm. And nothing superfluous. And when yeah. it's set, it finishes. It's done. There's, yeah. there's no kind of like, how much mileage can we get from this outro? You know, none of that. Yeah. It, 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 it's just the other side. It's, it's, the, it's the contemplative uh, side, I guess, as much as anything. Mm-hmm. But that's Gary Novak on drums on that record. Yeah, amazing. And, and he's just playing. I mean, for the people who know him from Alan Holdsworth or Chick Corea Electric Band or, uh, you know, one of these uh, amazing things that he's done. Mm-hmm. And you think, my God, you know, he, he really is the a consummate musician, a, a very wide musician. Or uh, uh, what's the word? It, it's it's not just the it's the exterior. It's it's bringing everything in, and and the fact that that it makes him such a worldly artist, mm. in the sense that he whatever experience he goes through and whatever benefit that he receives doing that and cultivating what is the right thing to do to do that as successfully as possible and as groovily as possible and and as best as possible uh stays with you yes and 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 it doesn't go away it becomes a little bit of your character and um i mean look at this for we were talking about my young days in the big band uh sid lawrence taught me one of the most grateful he was a band leader it was the sid lawrence orchestra mm-hmm. and um he said you know when you set up accents i hear your accents i don't hear the smaller notes i mean we didn't have pas back in the 70s like anything right. like what we have now you know yeah we would, we'd be playing anything from gymnasiums to airport hangers, yes. To, to whatever, and there's another thing about adjustment and and taking everything into account. Uh, and and it, and it virtually ended up with me uh, accepting the fact there are some imbalances here in my playing that I've got to address. Mm-hmm. And if and if this guy's standing right in front of me, which he did, I was in the middle of the band, and he can't hear things. Mm. I mean, then what does this stuff sound like from? midway back in the hall right so i'd actually invite friends to bring like a like a recording like a pro walkman at the time you know the mm-hmm. and uh, just just sit there with a condenser mic and just take the show would you sure oh. um uh, in those days you could do that without being thrown out right <laughs> right and um sure enough i couldn't wait to get back to you know a situation off stage where I could put the headphones on and really check that out. And sure enough, uh, my big stuff was totally overshadowing the small stuff. Mm. So if I'd be playing that like little shuffle beat, little the triplets going mm-hmm. inherent in a shuffle, mm-hmm. and all I can hear is ba 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 ba. There's something wrong with that picture. Right, so, right. Um, I had to go, I realized something had to give. Either the, the big ones had to come down or I had to get strong with the with the with what they call the ghost notes or the small notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, in favor of, what was that expression I saw Jay Graydon, the great producer, use the other day? The money notes. The, the money notes. notes. The back bass would be the money notes. Nice. <laughs> That's funny. But, but yeah, I, I realized that this really seriously needed addressing, and I did. And I kept mm-hmm. recording the show from midway down, somebody in the midway down the hall, uh, until I started to get that under control. That's uh, so great. Same, same with my interior kit. 
my 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 kit ballots, interior mm -hmm. ballots. Uh, bass drum too loud, or am I underplaying it? Am I not? Is it not really balancing out well enough? All of this I would get from recording a pretty lo-fi reference. Uh, nevertheless, would 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 actually tell me a lot as to what is actually getting there and get mm. to people and what, what people are feeling. Of course, now we have the problem of certain engineers and noise gates where our little ghost notes don't even make it. Into they the don't music. make it, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a, that's a whole other kind of worms issue. Mm -hmm. but, um, but this thing of um, interior kit balance, yeah, big, big thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and really what I was witnessing in myself, the performances were genuinely groovier uh, and a lot more sort of holding, more captivating as a, as a sort of rhythm source, as as a, as a experiencing the rhythm as it should be felt, uh, more than it would be if I was playing certain aspects of my playing, if it was delivering too loud. So um, this wasn't turning me on at all. I didn't want to hear that. And I'm damn sure that the audience who came to hear that swing music didn't want to hear that either. So right. this is... It's all part of the responsibility, I think, you know. Absolutely. And I and I love that you found a solution, you know, yeah. even if it wasn't, it's not, it's easier nowadays, of course. But, and you but, can listen. But, but right? the point I was wishing this was all leading up to was that yep. that snare drum sound uh, and that clarity that he insisted upon is still with me today. Mm. And I recognize it even from that thing. And I know that I cultivated it from, from that, mm -hmm. you know other kinds of music there were certain ways of playing symbols that i brought mm -hmm. um into bringing more of a, a little bit of a wider form to the way i approach symbols and use them generally um and that stayed with me and and gets applied in different ways through things right. and all these different experiences really can um, can only really go towards making us a lot more proficient and a lot more effective and uh, more regularly employed. Yes. <laughs> you know, this isn't the bad thing, is it? That's right, right. Good. That's the goal, right? Yeah, that's always that's good. Yeah. Right. That's so great. And speaking of which, tell us what you were up to. You just, you know, you're in Norway now and you let us know what you're doing there. What do you yeah. have coming up and um, what do you have going on and how can people find out where to see you play? Um, we're going, actually, we had a big uh, social media circus lately. Um, I got hacked. Uh, there, there was, I have at last got through to somebody within the company uh, who can make a difference, I'm hoping. So, you know, right. once, once really this, this gets beyond the algorithms and the artificial intelligence, it, it uh, and it gets to some kind of person who can mm -hmm. understand what's happened and go back to a certain date and see that from that day, yeah, you started selling shoes and uh, dressing gowns. Right, and, right. So, yeah, that wasn't you, was it? <laughs> so it doesn't, it's not going to be amazing, you know, it's not going to be sort of this amazing thing to, to sort of see that so uh my some of my pages have made it and the ones that are still around are uh there but they're being worked on at present my original instagram uh is back uh i've since started one called gary husband official uh this is all leading up to something but mm -hmm. i do have sort of more up-to-date pages with lots of <laughs> more modest followers i had 52 followers on on this facebook page that, and it's great for us musicians to get our mediums out there. We release a record. A lot mm -hmm. of people get to see that it's done. And, and that's really, you know, one of the biggest effective ways that we can, we can kind of get ourselves out there. And yeah. somebody comes along and does that. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Brush yourself off, start all over again, and you've got these uh, things happening. But what it was leading to was my website, uh, not the provider, the 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 platform that we used for my video cast, for instance. That was all at my website, GaryHusband.com. Um, and they suddenly <laughs> sold to Amazon, 
without oh. telling us. <laughs> so um, that's a surprise. And of course, taking my website, the entire contents were, were gone. The, the, all the video casts, uh, it wasn't, we backed all those up, but all the text, no, that was all. Wow. So we had to do the whole thing from, from square one again. So those are back, as is the website, as is a new tour dates page. So I'm, Fantastic. I'm, in, I'm back in business and we can now broadcast, you know, everything that's coming up. Absolutely. And that's uh, GaryHusband.com. So it is. Yeah. you can find um, tour dates. Like you mentioned, the drum video casts, which I want to make sure everyone knows about that. Um, you can... This is a, you can purchase them individually, right? Which I yeah. love. That's so fantastic. So definitely everyone listening, yeah. check out those video casts because they look great. Thanks. Yeah, they, they, I hope they're as motivational as people tell me they are, which I'm delighted to hear because that's all I want to do. I mean, not, none of us know anything. Mm -hmm. anyway. we, we know really what we've benefited from in terms of experience. Mm -hmm. and uh and what's worked for us which doesn't mm -hmm. mean to say it's going to work for the next person so the, i just like to really try and motivate people to sort of start making these decisions um and looking inside themselves for answers and using their intuition and all those kind of good things that yeah. make you you <laughs> you know them them mm -hmm. so, and uh, that's that's what i'm interested in in doing for the people that and there does there do seem to be quite a lot of lost attitudes out there, like attitudes such as, well, it's all been said, you know, there isn't a new thing. Everybody's done everything, you know. Right. Well, right. no, actually, uh, the way you do something, even if you were to copy somebody, try and emulate somebody, mm -hmm. ain't the same. It's only it's, you're still going to sound like you. Sorry about that, but yes. that's that's the way it is. That is you know, so true. So, you know, I'm trying to sort of do that. So that's largely motivational, but thanks for raising that subject. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will put all the links um, in the podcast show notes yeah. and the YouTube description so everyone can follow you and follow you on Instagram because your content, like I said, is so great, very Thanks. inspirational. And one other thing I have to mention too um, before we go is the photography the architecture, you know, you're showing <coughs> something, you're, you're showing something that's inspiring to you. And I, I love that. I love that you're going out there and taking these photos and sharing them because they're beautiful. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, just, just incredible. And, you know, you're, you're just finding kind of inspirational shots and, and sharing them. And it's great. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm very interested in, photography and maybe there's another co correlation with music there because it's shapes you know angles yes. it's right uh, it's, it's all color. math it's all math it's it's perspective it's, yes uh, you know yeah and it's expressive it really mm -hmm. is i mean i know people i can look at somebody who i know very well like my partner true and i i know how she takes photos and i can kind of recognize that she took it that's and, so uh, great and, and there are certain other photographers that really kind of reveal a character of their own. So it's, it's definitely got another thing. It's got some things in common. Yeah. But thanks. I love it. That's so great. Yeah. So everyone listening, go and follow Gary on Instagram and check out his website, GaryHusband.com. It's fantastic. And um, get out and see a live show because you are out there. You are playing. <laughs> I can't wait to see you play again in person and um, get to give you a big hug because that would be great. That that would be wonderful. There is one that one other thing to mention, and I think you asked me about this before. But there's a thing called the UK Drum Festival. Uh, yes, yes. And it's and and I'm back in it again this year. I I do not do it. I had to cancel last year uh, for some reasons. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm back, uh, and I'll be doing it this year. So it's coming up later this year. So that's that's one of the things. If you're in and around Britain or something, you want to come to that. But, Absolutely. And if I'm not mistaken, would, is, is that March of 2023, the UK drum show? I forgot. Is that right? <laughs> I'll, uh, <laughs> you know what? I will make sure to link that as well, because that is a great show for anyone listening who has not been. 
I have, I have not actually been in person, but I'm speaking from, um, you know, reference for the, from the past shows and everything that I've heard. Um, the, the, the musicians are fantastic. The drummers are fantastic, but then they also have this trade show element to it mm-hmm. with, you know, so many companies displaying, showing products. I always love that. I think our community loves that too, getting to try things out, see what's new, um, all of that. But I will put the dates and I'll put a link to that so everyone can check that out too. Thank you for mentioning that. Thank you. Uh, that would be great, Sarah. But yeah, what you mentioned before about us uh, hooking up, you know, I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get a US visa because it's been a long time since I've been over in America, you know, in the performing okay. capacity. Yeah. Uh, and I used to sort of live there, basically, at least on the other side, on the west side. Um, uh, it's just been too long, and I'm missing a lot of good friends and fantastic musicians. So I'm hoping to try and get that visa together and, and get over there as more often as possible. Where, where are you on the East Coast, Sarah? I'm located near Boston. Okay. Yes. Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah, so that's a... Great place, great venues, all of that. So definitely come through and we'll have to have a good meal together. Yeah, Johnny D's is gone though, right? Johnny D's is gone. Yeah, I'm, so many of the places are gone. I'm actually going to a new venue tonight. So there is hope. I'm seeing Gavin yeah, yeah. Harrison tonight at uh, oh. the MGM Music Hall at Fenway Park. It's a brand new venue. So Excellent. There's, there is hope. New places are opening. This from me. I will. I absolutely will. (laughs) Yeah. All right, Gary. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you coming on and I appreciate your friendship and look forward to seeing you again soon. Oh, it's for always, Sarah. Thanks. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in today. Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.